everybody. Lance Russell and Dave Brown, we're sitting right along ringside waiting for the action to begin, David. Oh, we are indeed. Listen to that. We got Bill Dundee, the superstar, in here today. Jimmy Jack Funk will be in here for a single match. The Hangman, Bobby Jaggers, will be along. We've got an eight-man tag yeah. team match. Listen to this. Uh, Uh, Manny Fernandez and Hector Guerrero yeah. from the music, they're not far away. They're not uh, to be out here until a little bit later. Don't, please, not today. You guys, you're due out here later on, not right now. Hey, come on now, Mr. Yeah. Microphone. You know, to start the day, you're all excited. You know you want the Mexican connection out here, baby, because there's no way to start a morning than, no, 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 it ain't Rice Krispies, it ain't Kellogg's, it's the Mexican connection. Hey. Hey, come on, can we do it later? We got time, we got no, lots of no, things. No, 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 do it later. Hey, See, this is the Manny Fernandez and Hector Guerrero one oh, hour and a half, and don't you forget it. That's the way it is. Now, listen, Manny, not only is our Mexican Medical Association more and more advanced than the oh, American no. Medical, oh, yeah. hey, Mexico's known for one thing, right, Manny? And what is that? For the greatest chili in the world. Hey, yeah, yeah. We don't take invitations. You we don't like invitations in the wall today, but all you... People want to go to Taco Bell. You want to go to John Tacos. No. Hey, baby, the real thing is looking at you. The one and only and the greatest Mexicans of all time, baby. And we're talking about aesthetic. We know oh, that. Right. Listen, huh? listen, there's one ingredient that's the most powerful ingredient in Mexico, and this is what you call the green jalapeno. Take a bite of this, baby. It'll <laughs> wake you up every morning. Hey, it's the best cure. You don't need no alcohol, or you don't need nothing. Whenever you got a hangover, just bite this pepper, and you'll get up real quick. <laughs> That's probably the first thing I ever heard. What it, what, it, what it gets to me is that, you know, in Mexico, you know, you don't find any grits and, uh, and then... Uh, grits! Grits! What? Oh, my God. Grits. grits! and biscuits. You never find those places over there. But over here, look at all these invitations they got. Hey, I ain't getting sick and tired of you American people assassinating our Mexican food. Now cut that out, because there ain't no, gonna be no more happening. Listen, I'm gonna show you something. I brought oh, myself, what now? I brought myself a little bit of something today. Some more of that hair. Yeah, Mama Conchita's, Mama Conchita's kitchen. Conchita's Mama Conchita's here. kitchen. We brought some salsa for you to taste today. Hey, and this is the authentic Forget thing. Get that. All you gringos and chicken skins out there, if you like our food, try Mama Conchita's chili. This is the best chili wherever you'll find it. Now, let me see, Tate. Oh, I'd like for you to come on, Mr. Yeah. Hey, come on. No. Take a whip. Take a whip of that. Take a whip of that. Be careful, it'll yeah, take yeah. your hair out. Hey, it won't take his hair out. It'll put hair on your chest. Uh, authentic. Lance, Lance, I want you to taste this. No, you don't want me Come to on, taste Lance. it. I don't know what's Come in there, on, Hector. Lance. Hey, I saw you with that hair no, stuff in there, what it did. Do don't be no, putting we any of that to you. We did no, that. No, we're not going to do that. Mr. Mr. Microphone, uh, but we want you to taste some real uh, things. No. Hold on, real. Uh, Mr. No, Mr. I, 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 I tell you what, you, you taste it first, and then I'll try some of it. Manny, you know, I, Manny gave him a taste of that. Huh? No, no, no. After you, friend. Yeah, yeah. I guess if it's going to kill, it'll kill hey, them first. Let's open these people, let's open these people, let's open these people. Come yeah. on, come here, we're here. Hey, hey, look, your dog will fall off this thing. Well, we got a cooking show going now, David. Hey, hey, hey. Taste that, let's taste that. Is that hot? Oh, some good oh yeah, 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 here you go. Yeah. We got some real people here. Yeah. I woke up this morning, huh? Okay. Now, Mr. Microphone, <laughs> we want to, uh, let me hold this here. I don't want you to fall all over yourself when you hear this hey, chili. This is the greatest this chili is, in the world. Is, uh, Mama nope. Nothing you know, nothing going on. Nothing going on, baby. It's a real thing, just like me and him. Oh, can you believe this? Hot! Hot! Oh, yes, that's what, that's what chili is all about. You want some oh. help? No, I want this some water. Is what I want. Water. Yeah. Oh. Lance, we're gonna leave this here for you. Don't believe you. Uh, oh, let, okay. let, Dave, you want to try something? Uh, <laughs> Take my word oh, for it, Dave. Man. It's Give hot. No, it's plenty hot. It's hey, you right. might need okay. a couple of hey, couple, of, couple of buckets of water to taste your tang off. No, 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 no. We gotta take a break. We're hey, gonna be hey, back. Hey, no, no. Remember, yeah. remember, 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 the secret, the secret is, is all in the pepper. <laughs> it's all in okay. the pepper. Okay. All but spicy, baby. We
kisses and everything else, the best stuff's hot. Hey, the action underway immediately. We don't even have time for introductions. Referee says, Victor, fight, ring the bell. Let's make it official. Everybody's in the ring. Jim Jamison and Ken Raper were in there waiting for the arrival of the Mexican connection, Hector Guerrero and Manny Fernandez. Manny the raging bull out in the corner. Hector Guerrero in there still with his warm-up jacket on. That's Jim Jamison's head into the boot of the raging bull. Remember, Jim was the one that got doused with that Hector's hair remover, too. Oh, yeah. Looking he was for... after Hector, but uh, got overwhelmed real quick with Manny coming in there to help out. Just got dropped on the back of his neck. Fernandez, lower leg across the side of the head, over to the corner. Hector anxious to get in here. They double up. Fernandez picked Hector up and dropped him down on Jameson. He does not try for a cover. Jameson backed under the ropes, fired across the ring. Hector Guerrero, double forearm, tag made. Fernandez trying to get those chaps off that he had uh, when he came out here. Getting out to just plain old wrestling attire. Fernandez, the international heavyweight champion, goes to the top rope. Oh! All the way down. Dropped right down across Jim Jamison. That should be it. Mm. Mm. That is one minute, 27 seconds the time, and the Mexican connection, Hector Guerrero and Manny Fernandez have a victory. Ken Rayburn never even got into the ring. They just worked on Jim Jamison and beat him down, and boy, they finally worked it together. Okay, you got your win. No, okay, no, I don't. Come on now, Lance. Come on, Lance, help yourself. We still got a lot of show to do. I don't know, Come on. Come on now. Come on now. We got a lot of show to do. We got to hey, take hey, time out. Hey, you eat my chili. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. We're going we're gonna to we take time out. We're going to yeah. be back in just a moment. back into what is one of the most exciting television programs of championship wrestling I believe we've seen in a long time. You be sure and stay right there. And brother, Wednesday night in Evansville, I gotta tell you, it all comes down. We've got such things as the RPMs going against the Rockers with the possibility of Tommy Lane's Lincoln being given away right there. In addition to that, Jeff Jarrett will be there in Evansville going against Jimmy Jack Funk. Bill Dundee against Hector Guerrero. You're gonna be seeing a loser of the fall leaves town when we've got a, a situation where Paul Diamond, Pat Tanaka, will be going against King Carl Fergie and singing Don Bad. Let me tell you one thing, Lance Russell. I never did like either one of them punks when it was on our team, brother. And after Wednesday night, baby, in Everville, Indiana, you're going to be leaving on a bus or in an ambulance, and I'll promise you that, baby. Well, I tell you, remember, it works both ways. One of this team could be going. Donnie Bass said it all. Now, fellas, they got a deal going down at U-Haul. You better pick up the phone, call in, and make your appointment, suckers. Man. The whole time they were with the commission, they were nothing but losers. Right. This week, right. there's no, nothing going to be different. They're going to lose or they're going to leave town. We ain't going nowhere. The rest of the commission is here to stay. That's what it's all going to be about Wednesday night because I'll tell you, one of the teams is going to be heading on the road because the loser of the fall will leave town. That is just one of the... You know you don't want me to go... Hey, all I want you to do is just be there and let's have a good match. Wednesday night, I got to tell you, what a night it'll be. To go with our next match here, David. The first one didn't take too long, as a matter of fact. Fernandez and uh, Guerrero, very strong, and they. Coming out, the superstar, Bill Dundee. Billy, man, I don't know. I think it was Merle Haggard that wrote the song. You know, he said, What was he said? If you get knocked in this country, you go on the fight inside of him. Now, I know what it says up here. It says Australian, right? And that's where I grew up, and I, you know, but I came to America and I became American. I got a little piece of plastic, it says green card, and it says Bill Dundee's allowed to live in America. And I'm sure Manny Fernandez has got one, and I'm sure Hector Guerrero's got one, because if you ain't American, brother, you've got to get papers to stay here, and if you don't, you got to leave. So it's obviously you two jerks got them, or you wouldn't be here. But I'm awful proud of mine. I don't mind telling people I'm from Australia, because right now it's kosher to be from Australia. Paul Hogan makes a movie, calls it Crocodile Dundee, steals my name, makes yeah. $70 million off it. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, 
It's kosher to be an Australian. Well, I'm awful proud to be that, but I'm also double proud to be an American. Now, that's all I really got to say to you two jerks. And we go to Taco Bell, and we go to Taco John, and I like that food. And Lancel likes it, right? Yes, right. that was a little so, hot. Right? All I've got to say to you two bums, if you don't like it, leave it. All right. I tell you that. Yeah. So, wrestling and politics is two different things. Now, I'm fixing to climb up in the ring and wrestle somebody, and that's what I do for a living. I'm awful proud to be an Australian, but I'm doubly proud to be an American. Thank you. Okay, Billy. Superstar in the ring right now, ready to go against Keith Eric. Keith out of Memphis, Tennessee at 206. Bill Superstar Dundee, 214 pounds, originally from Australia. Referee Jerry Calhoun calls for the bell, and here we go. Dundee, Keith Eric. Eric, boy, you know Keith will do that, man. He'll try the very best that there is. That son of a gun, he gets all. When he gets in there, but done. Uh, you, yeah, I know you forgot something. Leave it situation. I am not to agreement. I am in my home. Mexico is here. And Hector Guerrero in Mexico is in the United States. Now, you all remember one thing. You all stole Texas from us. We didn't steal nothing from you all, and you all surged to the West Coast. Let me tell you one thing. As an American, as a Mexican, I am a Mexican, and I am in my country. This is my country. Hey, Bill Dundee! Bill Dundee! Bill Dundee! Come over here, Crickadale Dundee! Well, you got two of you guys simple and we're not gonna we're not gonna fight or anything let's have a little discussion here yeah. why do you say love it or leave it now i say one thing i am in my country this is mexico to me see tennessee volunteered to go to the alamo we didn't baby that's right and we, we won, won. We, we, won. won. we won we won I done told you a little bit before. Politics and wrestling is two different things. I wrestle for a living, you're very good at it, and you're very good at it. Just leave it at that. I don't care who had the Alamo first, and I don't care who has it now. I'm awful proud to be an American. Well, what kind of American is that? What kind of American is that? What do you mean, what kind of a, he just told you, he's proud He's an Australian! You know, down under! He's an Australian! You understand that? From down under! Bill well, Dundee, you're asking for money from down under! Well, you. Let's put it this way. If I was in Mexico and they played the Mexican National Anthem, I'd stand up and salute it. When they play the Star Stand or Banger, I'd stand up and salute. And when we go down to Australia and they play that National Anthem, I'd stand up and salute. But I'm awful proud to be here, brother, because I make an awful lot of money, and this is the best country in the world, and I like it, Daddy. You can tell he's a politician. He's a great politician. Hey, if they vote you for president, what are you going to tell us, Dundee, huh? That's You're a great politician there, baby. I mean, you know, you and President Reagan ought to be getting together there, Daddy. I'm and not getting involved in no politics. All I'm it. telling you, well, just let us, just real plain, if you don't like it, you don't love it, why don't you, and why don't you leave it? Why don't you guys just get out of here? Boy, they put that hot dip right in Dundee's eyes. Yeah, get it. You need to get some water on him. Take him back and get some water on the eyes. Okay, while they're doing that, we'll take time out here, and uh, we're going to be back with more championship wrestling coming up in just a moment.
action, and I know you want to see the rest of it. Man, it is something else today. Let's take a look at the action that is coming up around the territory in December. Thursday in Owensboro, Kentucky, Davies County High School. Friday, December the 11th at Madisonville, Kentucky. And Thursday, December the 17th at Morgan Field. Just start making your plans right now to be on the lookout for Wednesday night, man. You won't have but one chance to see a card like this. Tito uh, Joe, T. Joe Khan will be going against Brian Nobbs in the opening bout. International heavyweight title on the line when big Jerry Sags will be challenging the raging bull Manny Fernandez. Loser the fall to leave town between Paul Diamond and Pat Tanaka and King Carl Fergie and Don Bass with Prince at ringside. Bill Dundee goes against Hector Guerrero. Jeff Jarrett will be there Wednesday night to go against Jimmy Jack Funk and brother you can throw the rules out in that one. And then a Southern Tag Team title match. Midnight Rockers will be going against the RPMs. Maybe Tommy Lane's car will be given Not far away. Here they come. Marty Gennetti, Shawn Michaels are bringing the AWA Southern Tag Team Championship belts with them. Belts that they won uh, in, a, in a very tough way. Marty and Shawn, uh, congratulations on having the belts. I know that uh, the Diamond Ring match uh, as there were some problems uh, there after that match with these guys, the Rock and Roll RPMs. You've got them coming up in a match, though, and this time a very special stipulation. That's right, it is. You know, comes a time in everybody's life when you got to sit right back and look and say, oh, what the hell am I doing here? And right about now, it's got to be what the RPMs are doing because we already beat them for the belts. Then we beat them for some money, and then we beat them for a ring, and now they're putting up their Lincoln Continental. That's right. Tommy Lane's Lincoln Continental on the line this time. That's right. You know, some guys, they can't leave well enough alone. And you poor guys are going to lose everything you own if you keep messing with the Midnight Rockers. I'll tell you what. We were fortunate enough to come in to the South and take the Southern Tag Belts like we told everybody we were going to do. We told the people we were going to pay them back with the RPM's money, and we did that. We told the people that we were going to give them a diamond ring, and we did that. Well, now we're telling you, it's time for somebody to go driving away in one of those poor geeks' limo. And I'll tell you what, come on down to the Coliseum, wherever it may be, because the Midnight Rockers are keeping another promise, and they're letting some lucky person go home with one of the RPMs, Lincoln Continental, brother. All right, you've backed up uh, everything that uh, you've said since you've been in the territory here. Standing by right now, and I wish you guys would stand here and listen, because uh, uh, Lance right now is with the Rock and Roll RPMs, who I, I think are standing by that Lincoln Continental that's on the line. Lance? I'm standing outside with the former AWA Southern Tag Champions, the... Rock and roll RPMs. Tommy Lane and Mike Dice. See, you got your baseball bats to beat off your adoring fans. Well, Lance, uh, right here, we want to start out by this. First thing, the Midnight Rockers come in here and you steal our belts. The second thing you do, you jump us from behind and you throw our money out to all those freeloaders that are just like yourself. And the third thing, and most despicable, mm -hmm. My poor old lady don't have no ring now because you give it to a free owner just like yourself. So now you're wanting this Lincoln Continental put up, boys. You drive sports cars and whatever, well, we got the class of the line right here. And let me tell you something. If something does happen, <laughs> if you cheat your way past us again, we just might take these ball bats and beat it up because it is mine. I worked hard to pay for it, and I'll do what I want to with it. You know something, Tommy? Good night, Rockers. You come in here, <laughs> and you want to take Bubba's car? You've already taken everything else. Titles, money, diamond ring, and now the car. <laughs> you see the baseball bats? The car's going home with us because that's, that's our pride and joy. You're not getting the car. You might get the bat, but like Tommy said, if it happens again, if you get it over again, we'll beat the car to where it's not even drivable. TL, let's get out of here. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll tell you one thing. A lot of people would be glad to see you go in. That's the kind of attitude. They put the car up, and son of a gun, now they're talking about if they lose it, they're going to beat that thing to death. Dave, take it away, please. Okay, thanks, Lance. Uh, Sean, you heard what they said. That's right, Dave. I'll tell you what. You know, the Midnight Rockers in their career, they haven't done a whole lot of things right, and nobody's caused more trouble in the world of professional wrestling than the Midnight Rockers, but they're the first to admit it. But I'll tell you what, RPMs, they've never stole a title. They've never stole anything from anybody. Everything the Midnight Rockers have ever gotten in their lives, they've earned, and they've earned it through guts, 
and working hard. And I'll tell you what, if you don't like it, that is really, really tough. So Mike Davis and Tommy Lane, Midnight Rockers are telling you this. When we beat you in this match, we become the owners of that car. And if you lay one scratch on that car, we're sending you two ugly mugs to jail, pal. I'll tell you what, take our word for it. Somebody is going home in your car, whether you like it or not. John Michaels, Marty Gennetti. Rockers will be going against the rock and roll RPMs with that Lincoln Continental on the line. Special message right here about a special poster with Jeff Jarrett. Snakeskin boots. Faded jeans. Broad shoulders. And blonde hair. Wow. Now that's a poster. To order your Jeff Jarrett poster, call 1-800-336-2600. That's 1-800-336-2600. Save COD charges by having your credit card ready, or send a check or money order in the amount of $10 to Jarrett Poster, Post Office Box 3020, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08034. Allow two weeks for delivery. Okay. Back in the ring here in just a moment, and who is going to be in the ring but Jimmy Jack Funk, the former Mid America champion. I don't know okay. what kind of garbage is that? Now they got sissy boy posters. <laughs> yeah, it's a very attractive poster. The jealousy will get you nowhere. Jill. Look at here, Jimmy Jack Funk, the Mid American. No, anyway, no, wrong. Are you calling me a liar? You got the belt. But you're not the champion. You know Jeff Jarrett won that title in there. You stole that belt. Are you calling me a liar? Come on. Are you calling me a liar? I'm not calling you anything. Well, I'm like you. you got a match coming up here. I'll tell you what, that sissy boy could never beat me on my worst day when I got a three-day hangover. He could never beat me because okay. he's a sissy. Well, you'll have your opportunity, I'm certain, in there. But you do not have the belt legally. It's time to get in the ring and time for Take Jimmy Jack. Look at this. This is my belt. I beat that little sissy punk, and nobody is going to say that he beat me again. I'll tell you what. I am the toughest man who ever stepped in a wrestling ring, and everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. Well, there's somebody up in the rain that you're going to have to convince for it. you got a match coming up. you also got that rope and you got that cowbell as your little security blanket or something. You head for the ring. The belt does not belong to Jimmy Jack Funk. It was won by Jeff Jarrett, John Paul. No, uh oh you might know it. Yeah, John Paul getting the warm-up jacket off, and Jimmy Jack Funk jumps in from behind in the corner. Funk picking John Paul up by the hair, backs into the rope, across the ring, up high in the air. Oh, look at Funk. Boy, oh boy. That is two and it's over. It went 24 seconds. Jimmy Jack Funk went in there with a mission and defeats John Paul. Oh, I look like a beast. Yeah, but I also would have my belt. I am not a beast. I would have to tell you, you saw he jumped him before he ever got turned around in there. He's standing out here in conversation, and he went flying up in there and jumped John Paul, nailed him, and the match was over right then and there, actually. He beat him when his back was turned in there. Eddie Marlin. Jimmy Jeff Jack Jarrett. was out here bragging about he was a champion. He won the belt. He beat Jeff, and he got the belt. Well, everybody who was at the matches know that Jeff won the belt. He won it fair and square, and I'm giving Jimmy Jack one minute. You can either bring that belt out here, Jimmy Jack, in one minute, or you're suspended. You can take the belt with you and go wherever you want to go, but if you don't bring it out here right now, you're suspended. All right, fair enough. Now, we've had this situation before. That's right. I've had to do this before, and I'll do it again, I guess, as long as somebody's around like Jimmy Jack Funk. Steal but right now, you can bring it out. There's a clock, one minute. It better be here. Jeff ends up winning the belt in there, and then the guy 
bangs you around and takes the uh, belt and runs That's off. right, Lance. We talked about it, and I felt like I had a, a fair shake at the belt. Uh, the week before, there was just one referee. There was two referees. Uh, they saw what was going on, and uh, I was lucky enough to come out with the belt. But uh, in the, I guess in the glory of the victory, uh, Jimmy Jack had to spoil it. He had to hit me with the cowbell, and then uh, next thing I know, I woke up and uh, no belt. Yeah, you notice he's got that rope. He's got the belt. He always takes that to him to the ring in there, and don't say he doesn't use it because you know it's one of the... I hope he's watching the clock, Jimmy Jack, because you 60 seconds is about gone. And the situation has been laid down by Eddie Marlin, the fact that... Well, here he comes out here now. What did you say to me, to my face? Well, you come out here and I'll say it to your face. You lost the match. You lost this the match. This boy never beat me. He beat you. And then you stole the belt. I, I want never the belt stole back. nothing in my life. You stole the belt at the arena, and I want the belt back. He's got to be presented with <laughs> the belt. You think I'm just going to give this to you? You, need you think I'm going to hand this to you? You need to give it up or be gone. You want this belt? You're mighty right. Dundee with hot stuff in his eyes and they hang Jared off that rope in there. Boy, I gotta tell you. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's get ready to go. We got a uh, match coming up in the ring. We'll keep track and bring you up to date on uh, on Billy Ann and Jeff. And, and let's get them out. is going to be the freezer, William Thompson. Thompson out of Arkansas, 270 pounds. The hangman Bobby Jaggers out of Kansas City, Kansas. And he's in at 275 pounds. I'm going to go check on Jeff. Uh, yeah, Dave. okay. Bobby Jaggers, knee to the midsection of Thompson. These two guys just about the same size. Weight-wise, Bobby Jagger is about five pounds heavier, but Freezer with a slight height advantage on Bobby Jagger. 
when it comes to experience, most of that ends up in the column under the name Bobby Jaggers. He's got it down. Count as one, two. This one is also over very, very quickly. Second match in a row that we've had here that have been under 30 seconds. This one went uh, 29 seconds as Bobby Jaggers. Bobby Jaggers and Nathaniel Whitlock, better known as Nate the Rat, head out of here after the victory. William the Freezer Thompson being helped out of the ring by Jerry Calhoun. And that is the way that one goes. The win goes to Bobby Jaggers in less than 30 seconds. We're going to be back here with more of championship wrestling action for you in just a moment. Did I tell you, I mean excitement, brother, have we had it today, and it's not over with you. You stay right where you are, and I tell you one thing, you better make your plans to be out there along about Wednesday at the Coliseum in Evansville. What a night it's going to be. The RPMs are going to be putting that 85 Lincoln right up against the titles, and the Rockers have said if we win that, we're going to give it away also, just like the diamond ring. In addition to that, Jeff Jarrett has assured me it doesn't make any difference what it takes. He will be there to go against Jimmy Jack Funk. Bill Dundee, you better believe he's going to be after that dip-throwing Hector Guerrero come Wednesday night in there. And a loser of the fall leaves town. Boy, this means bye-bye to somebody. I want to get Paul Diamond in here because he and Pat Tanaka are going against Don Bass and King Carl Fergie in there. And, Paul, I don't have to explain it to you. You know whoever loses the fall, they're gone. Exactly right. Lance, and it's not just that. I'm going to explain a little bit to the people. This kind of match, what you're putting on the line is your pride and also your livelihood. You're losing your job and also the embarrassment throughout the wrestling world. Well, Prince, we wanted to eliminate you and the commission. And this thing has come to a head. And now is the time, baby, when the dust settles and the smoke clears, bad company's still going to be standing here and the commission is gonna be gone. You better be out there to say bye-bye to somebody. One of those four guys will be on the road. Wednesday night, just a big night for you to be out there. Come on out. Team match coming up right here. The referee is in the ring. Now we're waiting for everybody else to get in there. That, uh, that's King Carl Fergie out here at ringside talking to the referee. Get him out of here. Here come the uh, four people who are going to be on one side of the ring, the executioners under the hood with Nate the Rat, their manager. Blue Knight under a blue mask and uh, the only unmasked person in, uh, on this side of the ring. Keith Robertson. Everybody out of parts unknown except Robertson. He's out of Memphis, Tennessee. Their total weight of 909 pounds. And across the way, there's the music. The Rockers shouldn't be far behind. They'll be going with Tanaka, Paul Diamond, here they come, Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty, the Midnight Rockers, bad company. Their total weight, that can't be right, 972 pounds, that's 672, they don't weigh about 112 pounds, that, was, that wouldn't work out, 972 their total weight. This will be a match to the expiration of time, Jerry Calhoun, the referee. We always wish him good luck in an eight-man match because he needs it, having to watch. In this case, not eight, but nine with Nathaniel Whitlock down here at ringside. Okay, we're off and running with Tanaka and one of the executioners going at it, Randy. Lance, I thought I should come out. You know, long before I was involved in the promotion, I watched this TV show every week, Faithful Hero. I've seen a lot of things happen on championship wrestling as you have over the years. Today, I feel I have to comment on some of the things that happened. First of all, Bill Dundee, we got him out of here. He went to wash his eyes out. He called back, and one of his eyes is, uh, he can't see out of it, Lance. And uh, he has sight in the other one, but he said to assure everybody, one eye, it didn't matter. He would be, he would make all of his bookings so well, I believe that. I'll tell you, he's tough enough. He'll be there. And Bill has uh, as much desire as anybody, and he'll be there for the matches. How about Jeff? Jeff, we uh, got him uh, out of here almost immediately. As a matter of fact, uh, they got him out of here when, uh, as soon as they could, because that was a situation that was as risky as any I've ever seen. Like, I was scared to death. 
it was a Steph Grayson thing that played the funk. And uh, as I told you, the thing to have done would be suspend the guy. But Jeff has more desire and more heart. And he said, hey, that was just like run along, Jimmy Jack Funk. You've done your damage. Jeff wants a chance at him. He uh, will get his chance. He'll have a match with him, but Jeff Jarrett is going to go right ahead after him. And he's always going after him, Lance. I don't think winning is in the back of his mind now because that is the most serious thing that's ever happened to him and a terrible thing to happen to anybody. It's stupid. He comes out here. He's got that, that rope with a noose in it and a bell on the other end of the thing, and he hadn't got it just for decoration, brother. He uses it, and he certainly put it up there. And it, it also makes me hot. He slams Eddie in the head with a, with a uh, bell busts his head open in addition to that he hits him on in the head with that cowbell and split his head open again awful Lance. i just wanted to come out and express okay. my opinion thank you randy appreciate it very much randy hale giving us a little update on both billy good move by Janetti, and look at that teaming do they not work well together Boy, these guys are dynamite the midnight rockers sean michaels marty Janetti. one sets him up and the other one goes to work on him that's the blue knight in there the victim of this uh yeah, well, Keith Robertson's unhappy. He said he, they were double teamed. They were. Paul Diamond in after a tag. Diamond. Uh, snap Ooh. suplex. Let me tell you, that takes some upper body strength to do that. He got him down for a count of two. Paul picked him up, I think. I don't think the, yep. uh, the knight broke that. Uh, that's not, not really a wise move, Paul, but... We'll see how it works out. Oh, Pat Tanaka, the he other half of that. He wanted to give Tanaka a shot at him, too. He took it. Let me tell you, there's another one. Big chop. Over to the corner. John Michaels of the Midnight Rockers back in now. The Blue Knight reaching for a tag. He's looking for help wherever he can find it, and he does not find it. I can't say that I blame him, because I'll tell you, those are four very, very capable guys on the far side of the ring from the execution of Robertson and the Blue Knight. Really, when you've got the Midnight Rockers and Bad Company together, you've got four guys that can go. Whoa, look at this. Marty Gennetti does a little revolving door. It took them all out of there. Neil Robertson, the two executioners, and then pulls the Blue Knight back out across the ring, makes a tag back on his partner. Shawn Michaels climbing up the rope and dropping down with the elbow on the arm. I think Marty Jannetty went after him in this corner as if to say, just in case you were thinking about anything. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Shawn Michaels with an arm bar on the Blue Knight. Knight trying to fight him off. He used a right hand. Shawn Michaels has him down to the mat. He got a two count. Couldn't make it stick for three. Count of two again. He just doesn't have enough of his own weight over uh, the Blue Knight to be able to hold him down. He got a the, the, the slight advantage in that case, and it was just too slight for Shawn Michaels to hold him down. Look out, Robertson, executioners all working on Shawn Michaels over in the corner. Referee trying to get him out of there. He does. Shawn Michaels helps himself out of there. And Keith Robertson hanging back a little bit. Little John back and forth. Yeah. Uh, going on between Michaels and uh, Robertson. Tag on the executioner. Yeah, I think Michael said something like, come on, Tex. And uh, Robertson said, I've never even been to Texas. Uh, Robertson wrestles out of Memphis. Hey, who is out of Texas, though? Shawn Michaels. Uh, yeah. San Antonio. San Antonio. Marty Gennetti's from Columbus, Georgia. He waits. The executioner finds himself up in the air and body slammed by Shawn Michaels. Shawn over close to the corner. See if he goes for a tag. He does. Pat Tanaka will be coming in. Tanaka said, oh. Corner. Pat 
Tanaka ran right into the turnbuckles and bounced out of there. Executioner, uh, he ducks under, and Tanaka comes back with a chop. Executioner thought he had him set up for a pin. Tanaka snaps him down. Boy, he manages his weight so well. Gets position, Dave. You see how he got under and kept his weight low and just snap rolled him over there. Beautiful move on that suplex. Uh, Keith Robertson is complaining that everything that's going on in there is illegal. Nate the Rat says disqualify him. I don't know what they're all so upset about. They're <laughs> making the change over in the corner after the tag. I haven't noticed an unusual amount of double teaming or anything. They're getting there. beat. That's what they're upset about. <laughs> I, I think he got it. I think he got it. Shawn Michaels in here right now. There's a tag made. The other executioner will be coming in. A boot to the midsection. He jabbed him in the throat with a fist. Keith Robertson takes a shot at him, as does the Blue Knight while he's over in the corner. Executioner reversed. Michaels put him into the turnbuckles. Whoa! He bounced him up high and off the mat. Great drop kick by Shawn Michaels. You watch fundamental moves like that, and when you see a guy go through the, the absolute fundamentals of it, he went up in the air, kind of suspended himself, bam, fired that kick. Oh, boy, you can bet. This is a guy that did his homework and learned his trade. Executioner reaching for the tag, both of them. You see them, they were about a foot, foot and a half apart. Marty Gennetti, I think, wants to keep it that way. Yeah, exactly. Gennetti, back on the rope, fired across. Oh, he set himself. Great reversal by Gennetti. Wow. Tell you what, Gennetti and Michael. Most impressive, not only with the moves we see out of them, but their balance, their thinking, their smart. You can win a lot of wrestling matches that way. Yeah, and they have the other ingredient, too. They work so well together as a team. Now, we don't just give lip service to that, uh, but it is a fact. They do think, and they work together and be sure they use the best uh, potential that they have in there. Former World Tag Champions, Michaels and Janelle. Oh! Flipped the ring, oh boy, and he got caught from behind by the executioner as he was coming back into the ring after chasing Nate the Rat. Nate distracted him outside, went flipping around the edge, and as uh, Marty came back in the ring, he was dropped on the executioner, reverse neck breaker. With Keith Robertson makes a one, two, and that's all. That's the first count, though, that I think they've had on any of the opposing teams. That's There's a tag. That is the closest they had been. Both the Rockers in there now with the Blue Knight. Oh, oh look at that. That is one, two, three. Teamwork is what did it. Man, was that some teamwork and That was incredible. That, that was, in fact, incredible. Ten oh. minutes, two seconds the time. We got to get out of here. Be back in just a minute. That is in terms of wrestling parlance, but boy, some spiffy action with these guys. I love to see uh, the rockers go and bad company, give them their credit disagree on attitude but boy man you, that's some you great put team. all four of them on the same side of the ring you've got yourself a powerful team oh huh? i gotta tell you i love that. i like to see too. that combination and, and they yeah. won it 1002 was the time on it as they got the win there 1002 well we had a good one as they uh, came out victorious in there and really teamed it up to get it on the end you know dave i was sitting here thinking about today and we've had goodness gracious a lot of days and a lot of incidents happen but i'm thinking about 
uh, stuff like like Hector uh, uh, doing the hair thing and, and taking part of the hair out of Jim Jamison said, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, him him throwing that hot sauce right in the eyes of Bill Dundee. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about I can't even believe what Jimmy Jack Funk did with that hanging. Oh, there. I know. And it's it's a whole different thing than some of the things that we've had before. Well, yeah, we've had cake fights and stuff like yeah. that, and you know mustard fights and uh, concession stands and stuff. But this that's different. I mean, that's that's not anywhere in the same league as what we saw. Total one idea, let's injure somebody. And I mean, in the case in particular with with Jeff Jarrett in there, let's injure him as bad as we can. Let's hang him. No out excuse there. whatsoever. For those who might have missed it, uh, Dundee uh, was out here joying and, and saying, hey, if you don't like America, why don't you leave it? And all of a sudden, bang, take a look. Yeah. Billy, Billy's turning to go away, and Hector awesome. with that stuff right in the mm -hmm. eyes. And and Randy updated his son that they got water in it is, uh, but I think probably it was his left eye bec uh, was the one that is still in bad shape because he caught it looked like most of it right there in that face. Now, now you know that stuff. That is ridiculous. I mean, the guy had, and I can tell you that sauce hot. Plenty of jalapeno and a lot of other hot sauce and all that kind of stuff in there. But then, even worse than that, uh, Jimmy Jack Funk, who stole the belt after Jeff Jarrett won it. Uh, Eddie Marlin told him to get it out here. He had one minute to do it. He brought it out here. He bangs Eddie in the head Eddie and with busts it. his head open. Mm -hmm. and, and then he gets Jeff Jarrett up in the ring. And he's going to hang him. And boy, I'll tell you, he did a good job of it. Let's take a look. Look at this. He takes Jeff and suspends him. He locks his leg underneath the, uh, uh, underneath the turnbuckles. He takes that rope with the hangman's knot in one end and that cowbell in the other end. And here's a, here's a guy who weighs 265 pounds. He straightens Jeff out from the corner. Now, I mean, what he's straightening him out with is with a rope around his, his neck. neck. Mm -hmm. And he's out there jerking away on him, pulling it. Eddie's going to kind of come up in here. He takes the bell on the end of that thing and bangs Eddie again with it, knocks him down, still holding on to And look at that. He is holding Jeff Jarrett out from the corner with that rope around his neck. Absolutely just, oh, boy, I got to tell you, it just has no compunctions about doing stuff like that in the world and irritates a stew out of me. I uh, can understand what what they're talking about and leave him here where somebody will get a crack like Jeff had a crack at him, but boy, I tell you, mm, well, now about that carrying on, let's uh, take a look at what, <laughs> what else happened okay. today. Well, and uh, Hector and uh, Manny Fernandez, the Mexican connection in here, they won their match in about a minute and a half. Uh, then all of that business with uh, with Dundee, after Dundee had uh, had won his match handily, too, in less than 30 seconds. And then uh, Guerrero took that hot stuff and threw it in his face, as you just saw again. Jimmy Jack Funk defeated John Paul. That's why he was out here to begin with. He had a, had a match scheduled in the ring, uh, which he won uh, over John Paul. But he won, uh, we should point out, by jumping him from behind. So there was not an honorable victory oh, for, uh, for Mr. Oh. Funk there either. Right. Hangman Bobby Jaggers out against uh, the very large William the Freezer Thompson. Uh, Jaggers won that one in about 30 seconds. And then... Well, uh, this one almost made up, well, not quite, you can't, but uh, almost made up for what had happened the rest of the day with that eight-man tag team match. Boy, did we see some action from Pat Tanaka, Paul Diamond, and the Midnight Rockers, Marty Jannetty and Shawn Michaels, as they got the victory in just over 10 minutes over the team of the Executioners, Keith Robertson, the Blue Knight, and Nate the Rat, one Nathaniel Whitlock over in their corner. Yeah, and did a good job of it, too. Well, the only thing I can say is about guys like Jimmy Jack Funk and Jaggers and all of these guys is uh, they think, you know, they're the first ones to scream when somebody starts getting back. Absolutely. First ones to holler Absolutely. the loudest. The loudest. Uh -huh. Okay, we'll be back next week. We won't be in a bad mood either. We'll be looking for you. For Dave Brown, Lance Russell, the same. Bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.
sweater group we got here today. Hello again, everybody.